Listen, I'm telling you, hey, this is the Wakanda difference. And happy Juneteenth, everybody. Happy Juneteenth. I mean, let's let's talk a little bit about Juneteenth, also known as Freedom Day, Jubilee Day, Cell Liberation Day, or the Black Fourth of July. It's an American holiday that commemorates June 19, 1865. The celebration originated in Texas, where I'm from, when Major General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston, he announced on June 19, 1865, with general orders number three, that the Civil War was over and all slaves were now freedmen. News traveled slowly, even authority, uh, even stubbornly, during and after the war between the states. The Emancipation Proclamation had been signed over two years earlier. General Lee had surrendered at approximation two months before and President Lincoln had already been laid to rest. Now, the most popular theories under the involved that the idea was there weren't enough Union generals who could get over there. White slave owners wanted to maintain hold on enslaved people by not alerting them. And slaveholders wanted to get one more crop out of the enslaved folks. So the June 19th announcement came more than two and a half years after Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863. So technically from the Union's perspective, the 250,000 enslaved people in Texas were already free but none of them were aware of it. <laughs> and no one was in a rush to inform them. Since General Major Gordon Granger reached Galveston on June 19, 1865, Juneteenth, coined by combining June and 19th, has grown in waves. But do you know what was missing? Do you know what was lacking during that time period? Compliance. <laughs> That's what was lacking. Had they had compliance, this never would have transpired. Because compliance is what? The act of adhering to or conforming with a law, a rule, a demand, or a request. It's following a rule of order. Compliance is the process of making sure your company and employees follow all the laws, regulations, standards, and ethical practices that apply to your organization and industry. So come on, everybody, thank God for compliance. So we won't be late to the table, so we won't get uh, the short end of the stick, or so we won't get left enslaved. Let's me welcome everyone to our second monthly hashtag, The Wakanda Difference. Yay! And what better way to get started than with a phenomenal woman who is so fantastic in what she does and is going to be our very first speaker, Dr. Joy, Dr. Joy Smith. Dr. Joy Smith is a registered pharmacist in the state of Illinois with eight years of experience in retail, hospital, and ambulatory settings. She obtained her doctorate of pharmacy from Florida A&M University in 2012. Her experience in pharmacy has always been guided by continued compliance with local, state, and federal laws as regulated by the Illinois Board of Pharmacy and various drug monitoring agencies, aligning with Wakana as a certified dispensary owner and a member of the Medical Advisory Board enables Dr. Smith to exercise some of those same compliance practices in this cannabis space. Please. Welcome, Dr. Joy M. Smith. Dr. Smith, are you out there? Dr. Joy, are you there?
Okay. Let's see here. Dr. Joy says she can't share her screen. So Dr. Joy, you should go, go to your email. I think Dr. Rita just sent you an email to, for you to come back in and you would be a panelist. You come back in. Dr. Joy, this is um, Thomas. Dr. Joy is going to leave, leave out and come back in um, to log in as a panelist. All right, fantastic, fantastic. Well, while she's, while she's doing that, listen, I'm telling you, you're in for a treat because of the information that we're about to give to you regarding compliance. You know, it's important for us to be compliant. It's important for us to have this information. And so many of you are doing so many different things with the company. We're excited about you and what you're doing, but we want you to be compliant. And, and you're taking the time to get this information tonight. So Dr. Joy, I think she's back in. Dr. Joy, you there? I am here, Dr. Ross. Can you hear me? All right, I can hear you fine. Wonderful. Is it clear for you? Yes. Okay. All right. We're not going to let this get us down this afternoon. We are going to talk <laughs> about this, what kind of difference, what makes us different. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. One moment here. And let's go back to one second. I'm sorry. All of these windows. One second, let me go back. I have a lot of windows open and I wanna make sure you all see the correct one. Okay, here we are. All right. So here we are at this second Wakana difference. And I wanna thank you, Dr. Ross, for that amazing introduction. And I tell you, as I prepare for these, I learn so much. And I also reinforce prior knowledge that I've already had that allows me to educate confidently about our products. And it's from that lens that I speak on this platform because we want all of our customers and all of our business partners not only to be comfortable using our products and to know how they compare to others in the market, but we want them to feel empowered to share them with everyone that they know. So with that, um, we, we're empowered to speak about our products with confidence because we have what's called COAs or certificates of analysis. You may have heard Dr. Rita talk about it in prior presentations, but if you, if you don't know what a COA is, let's show you how you can get to it on the Wakana website. So you don't have to call our company headquarters. You don't have to send in a, a, a request via mail and wait for it to come back to you. You can get this certificate of analysis from our products right from the comfort of your own home. Um, our products are what they say they are and the certificate of analysis is what helps us to understand that. So you can access that information right from the comfort of your home, right on your couch and it's simple. All you have to do is navigate to the product you'd like to view. In this case, we're talking about our uh, Power Hem Premium MD. When you scroll down near the picture, there's an area that's called downloads. If you click on that PDF, what's gonna then open up is your certificate of analysis and it opens up in a separate window so that you can see all of the components of the product that you're using. And you can know that what we say is in our bottle is actually in our bottle. And I think that it's important that we arm our distributors and our customers with that knowledge in order to preserve the integrity of our amazing company. Let's go to this next one. Now, one of the first things that people make comments about is how much CBD they have in their bottle. And so how many of you have gotten feedback about CBD from customers, friends, family, what have you? And they'll say, my CBD at home is stronger than that. You only have 500 milligrams in our power by Hempranium, but I have 4,000 milligrams in mine, so I'm good. Now, when I hear that, my pharmacy spidey senses start going off and I'm like, okay, are these concentrations the same? You may have more, but is your bottle bigger? And so sometimes you can have a larger bottle with a larger amount of CBD in milligrams, but if it's distributed in a larger volume of carrier oil, you might be surprised to find out that it's the same concentration or close if it's not the same amount. So for example, if we're talking about our power by Hempranium, which is 500 milligrams in 15 milliliters of carrier oil, that's about 33 milligrams per milliliter. And then if you look at this other product to the right from a different company, they have 4,000 milligrams of CBD 
and 120 milliliters of carrier oil, excuse me. So if you do the math with the CBD and the milligrams, you'll see that the concentration is the same amount. You're just dealing with a bigger bottle. So don't just look at the milligrams and say, oh, I have more, I have less. Really look at what the concentration is and know that you're calculating the concentration by uh, dividing the amount of milligrams in the bottle by the amount of carrier oil in the bottle to get that number. Okay. All right. So Dr. Really, Dr. Rita is really going to dig into what we need to see on the labels of our quality CBD products that we may encounter. And her teaching is going to empower all of us to be more confident about what kind of products, one, and then to know what we're looking for when we look at labels on other products. Maybe our customers or our friends or family members may send us a product and we don't know what's in, they don't know what's in it, but we'll be able to be educated around that and be able to let them know what we see. So now that we know how to calculate dosing, and we will know how much CBD is in any product that we come across. Now with our products, we've made sure to cover all bases in terms of what needs to be included on the label or in literature that we provide on our website. And again, our products don't contain any mold, any mildew, any pesticides or added fillers. And fillers, uh, what they do is they help companies sell more product a lot of time because it helps you to stretch out the product. But is it beneficial to consumers? That's the question that you need to think about. Beneficial to consumers, beneficial to us as, as business owners. Is that beneficial? And the answer is no. But let me tell you why. So fillers and CBD products, what are fillers anyway? It's a term we hear thrown around a lot. It's not surprising that a lot of people don't even know what it means or know why it's bad. But filler ingredients are ingredients that are found in a product and they don't actually need to be there. They don't contribute anything positive to the formula. And more often than not, they exist primarily to fill out or stretch the product. So let's apply this to CBD. We know that the pure industrial hemp that we're using is fairly expensive to, to harvest or produce. So if there's a company that's looking to save money um, by not using as much of that product, they may get something that they can add to their product to water it down so that they can use less hemp, but still provide a good product volume. So filler ingredients are cheap. And by using them, companies can save a lot of money. Now, not all fillers are bad though. So some are carrier oils like the hemp seed oil. Um, that's the carrier oil, but that waters down the potency of the CBD. That, that hemp seed oil is not hazardous to your health necessarily. In fact, it's really good for your skin. It's good for cooking. And Dr. Rita will bring that up in a moment. Um, but they'll impact the ability of you being able to get the CBD effects that you're looking for because you think that you're getting a certain dose, but you're really getting a diluted product. The other issue, or one of the major issues, is that the filler ingredients, when they reduce the potency of the product, that's not the only problem. Sometimes they can be dangerous to consume in high doses or regularly over a long period of time. So what I want to talk to you about is what harmful filler ingredients may be in some of the CBD products that you may come across and how they can impact our health. So when we talk about filler products, again, we're talking about something that can stretch the product or something that's added that doesn't need to be there. So there's a few filler products that I want to discuss with you that happens to be the most popular. And those filler products, one of them is dextromethorphan. It's found in some CBD products as a filler. And you may have heard of this ingredient for those in the medical community. You may have heard of this ingredient in cough syrups. It's also been added to various CBD products, particularly in vapes that, could, that claim to be all natural. And why was it added to the vapes? Well, if you know anything about a cough suppressant or a cough medication, it's used to stop cough. It's used to stop that urge to cough. And when you're smoking and when you're vaping, that urge to cough comes up all Often. So they may have thought that they were being clever by adding that dextromethorphan to the vapes, but in actuality, it can, cause, it can cause a whole bunch of harmful side effects that can last for a very, very long time. The dextromethorphan can also cause uh, an intoxicating or a sedating effect, and that can heighten the sedation that's, that's usually experienced by most cannabinoids. That might seem harmless, but over time, it can be very harmful to your health. Then you have the 5-F-A-D-B, that's been added to edibles. And when we say edibles, we're talking about like our vapes. I'm sorry, excuse me, we're talking about like our gummies. That compound can cause dizziness, it can cause fainting, headaches, nausea, irritability, 
all things that usually aren't caused by CBD, but when these things are added, then people may say, oh, well, this made me feel terrible. May not have been the CBD. It may have been what was added to it. And they're obviously not side effects that you want to feel when you're taking CBD for relief. You're taking CBD to relax. You're taking CBD to relieve your pain. You don't want all these extra side effects coming up on you. And, and that will make the, the experience with the CBD that much less enjoyable. Next, we have vitamin E. And we've talked a little bit about this before, but vitamin E, which is great for your skin, is horrible in vape cartridges. Because when you inhale vitamin E, it can, it can disrupt the fluid lining on the surface of the lungs, any type of vitamin E, there are different forms. It can disrupt the surface lining on the lungs and make breathing very, very difficult. Now, diacetyl is a harmful flavoring in vape cartridges. So that's been known to cause lung disease that blocks some of the airways in the lungs, leaves users coughing, constantly short of breath, all of these other things. All of these things that are added to CBD products are not what CBD products were made for. CBD products were made for medicinal benefit. And though we can't say that they cure, we can say that they help and that they assist, but all of these harmful side effects are not helping or assisting anything. So you see why it's so important to do your research. Look on the backs of the labels to see what's going on in that product that you've bought. Make sure that you have a certificate of analysis so that you know that exactly what they say is in the product is in the product. And my, my personal opinion is that if it doesn't have a COA, you need to run far, far away. I made that rhyme so you can remember. If it doesn't have a COA, run far, far away. So what do we want to take away from this? You want to make sure that your product has a certificate of analysis, something that outlines all of the ingredients that's in, in a particular product that you're buying, the amounts that's in there so you can see that if it says 500 milligrams on the bottle, indeed 500 milligrams are in the bottle. You want to know how much CBD is in your bottle. Um, knowing the dosage versus what you have versus what you may see in a grocery store or what you may see when you're picking up another CBD bottle or when any of your other um, any of your other customers or family members bring something to you. You can know how to calculate that dosage. You want to watch out for fillers, that dextromethorphan, uh, that, that diacetyl, the vitamin E, um, the 5-FADB. You want to watch out for all of those things because sometimes they'll put confusing names on there just so you won't go look at it. It's like, okay, well, that just must be a chemical. No, you want to educate yourself and make sure you know exactly what is in there. And as a takeaway, if it does not have a COA, run far, far away. Okay. And on that note, my time here is done. I do want to get out of Dr. Rita's way so she can come and give you all of the uh, supplementary information about what you're looking for on your label. She's just going to pack you with information, guys. But I just want to make sure that you all understand that it's so, so important to know what's on your labels. It's so, so important to empower yourself and arm yourself with the knowledge so that you can give it to other people so that they can continue to get well. And I wanna thank you for taking this time out on this Juneteenth where we not only celebrate our great ancestors and our kings and queens, but we celebrate ourselves and the things that we're doing uh, to advance ourselves further. So I appreciate each and every one of you and I pray that something was said or something was done this evening that increased your knowledge and confidence around sharing this product. So Dr. Rise, I'll give it back to you. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Joy. Listen, everybody, if it doesn't have, if it doesn't have a COA, run far, far away. I mean, everybody's got to start saying that whenever you look at anything. And when she was talking about fillers, it made me think about one of those big boxes you get uh, when you order something and it's got all those bubbles in it. And then there's a little bitty package way down in the middle. Yeah, that's, you know, fillers. That's my, my definition of fillers. Anyway, let's move right along. Listen, I am so excited. Listen, listen, listen. Dr. Rita McGuire, one of the co-founders of Wakana, our chief medical officer and the pillar of health, affectionately known as Dr. Rita. I just love her. I love her. I love her. She's globally recognized as an OBGYN with over... 8,000 deliveries. She's, she's still delivering babies, y'all. Over a 30 plus year career. She is well established in the medical professional serving as medical director and attending physician. She was recognized in Chicago because she was the first 
physician in Illinois to certify patients in the opioid uh, alternative pilot program. She's become an expert in the cannabis space, so much so that the governor of Illinois asked her to testify for the Judiciary Committee for the Legalization and Taxation of Adult Use Law. Therefore, she is strongly and dedicated advocate for the education and the legalization of everything about cannabis. She's our educator as it relates to everything about compliance here at Wakana. Listen, let's welcome everybody, Dr. Rita J. McGuire. Dr. Rita, are you there? I am here. Thank you, Dr. Ross. Thank you for that warm welcome and just excuse my tardiness, all four pillars. We are here at the dispensary at the corporate office. We are having an amazing Juneteenth. We are doing and rolling out a huge photo shoot because tonight we're going to party. We have a surprise for you, all of you. So you want to tune in to Facebook Live at around eight or nine o'clock when we're done here. And Dr. Joy Smith, Wow, that information was very important. And the whole intention of tonight is to really help our business partners to educate their customers. Because Dr. Ross, I would get at least four to five inquiries every single day of business partners asking me why this bottle of CBD is not working for their loved ones. It's not a Wakana product, it's another product. So we're going to learn tonight how to read the label, what to look for in a CBD product, what you should be looking for in our Wakana products, and how it's going to equip you to be more confident when you're speaking with your consumers, your customers, your loved ones, as it relates to CBD. So this should say part two of hashtag. So let's get into a little overview of what I discussed last month. We talked about the importance of the 2018 Farm Bill. This is a bill that after 40, 80 years, whenever you want to start counting, was it in the 30s or the 70s when um, Ronald Reagan or Nixon um, classified uh, cannabis as a Schedule I drug. The 2018 Farm Bill descheduled the hemp species of the cannabis plant. And that's really important to understand the importance of the 2018 Farm Bill because now this allows you to confidently allow your customers to understand that what you're selling is legal. So hemp is legal. On a federal level, all 50 states, it is legal to consume, to cultivate, to sell, as well as taking it from state to state. And since the 2018 Farm Bill, what we've seen is that the sales of CBD has skyrocketed, right? It's very popular, you see it everywhere. What's the funniest thing to me now is that they sell CBD at the video store. Imagine that, buying CBD products from a video store. So most people seek CBD products to help with anxiety, to help with pain, to help with insomnia, but it's important to know that not all CBD products are created equally. The quality varies greatly. The other thing that we talked about last month was how to read a COA. A certificate of analysis is absolutely critical in this CBD marketplace. And at Wakana, we are committed. We're transparent. Every single product has a certificate of analysis. And this allows your customers and even yourself to find out what's in the bottle, how many milligrams, what is the amount of CBD? So this is a third party lab test. It's unbiased. It is looking at the quality of the product as well as the content. So those were things that we went over last month. So why CBD labels? Why are they so complicated, right? 
they can be overwhelming. There's different terminology. There's different strengths. There are different sizes of bottles. The verbiage is confusing. You'll see hemp seed oil. You'll see hemp extract. You'll see hemp oil. And this industry of CBD is really not regulated. The FDA has not put in process strict regulations on what can be sold. So that's why you find CBD products at gas stations and smoke shops and beauty shops and video stores. So when you look at a product, it's important to understand this basic concept that hemp seed oil is not CBD. Hemp seed oil is not CBD, even though CBD is extracted from the hemp plant, hemp seed oil is not CBD. So if you remember in my teachings during certification or even sometimes on Tuesday and Wednesday, when I show you the anatomy of the hemp plant, it has different parts, right? It has the seeds, it has the flower, it has the buds, it has the stalk, it has the stem, but the seeds do not contain CBD. They contain very many nutritional products and compounds like omega-3, 6, and 9. They're great for your skin, your hair, your nails. They're a great uh, additive for your smoothies, but they will not give you the effect and the benefits that CBD can. Whereas CBD oil is extracted the most potent part of the plant that CBD is extracted from is the bud and the flower. Now the stem, small amounts of CBD come from that, but the stem and the fan leaves are particularly parts of the plant that are used to make rope, to make siding, to make industrial things. So just know when you see the word hemp seed oil on a bottle, that is the reason why your family members, your friends, your co-workers are not getting results. Many of them will come to you and say, oh, that CBD doesn't work. But if you really dig deep and figure out the product they were taking, nine times out of 10, it was hemp seed oil and not even CBD oil. Another thing that's important that you understand the stance that F the FDA has on label claims, okay? So many of you will contact me, you'll call me, you'll text me, you'll email me, and you'll say, Dr. Rita, which product do we have that's good for migraines? Or Dr. Rita, which product do we have that's good for lupus? Or Dr. Rita, which product do we have that's good for sickle cell, right? Many of you on the webinar have done that. And rightly so, because you want to help your family, your friends, and those who you love. But the FDA classifies a product as a drug if the label claims that the product treats or prevents disease or otherwise affects the structure or any function of the body. CBD is not a drug. Therefore, we cannot put on our labels something as you see this company has done. What does it say? CBD oil for migraines. That is making a claim that this particular product here will treat or prevent migraine headaches. That is a no-no. That's why you don't see any of Wakana labels that say things like CBD oil for migraines or CBD oil for lupus or CBD heart formula, okay? That is something that we drill in each and every month on certification that CBD has all these medicinal properties. There are 20,000 peer review articles that state that CBD is an analgesic, it's an anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant, it's anti-diabetic, it helps to reduce blood sugars, but we absolutely can't put on our label that CBD oil is for a specific disease. So that's why we always say the FDA does not approve of any of these statements. You cannot claim that any of our products treat, prevent, or cure 
any disease. Another thing the FDA says is a no-no, and that is claiming that CBD is a dietary supplement. So you can see this CBD company here has the word dietary supplement at the bottom of their label, right? So CBD products cannot be sold as a dietary supplement under section 201 of the FD&C Act. A dietary supplement is considered by the FDA a vitamin or a mineral, an herb or other botanical, an amino acid, a concentrate, a metabolite or extract. Absolutely, we cannot say that CBD is a dietary supplement and you will not see that on any of our labels. Another no-no, please do not say we sell gummy bears. Gummy bears is a no-no with the FDA. Anything that is associated with children or multivitamins or an association with candy cannot be used in same uh, reference when it comes to cannabis derived products. So please do not say that we sell gummy bears. Never refer to Wakana's gummies as such. You can see this particular company has pure CBD gummy bears. No, no, and more no. Another thing we need to talk about is the FDA definition of cosmetics. You know, we have an amazing power mango body cream. As you can see on the bottle, we don't use words like psoriasis or power mango body cream for acne or power mango body cream for eczema. But what we do say is that studies have shown that CBD is an antifungal and antibacterial. It can help with skin diseases because there's CBD receptors on the skin. And because, again, the FDA does not have strong regulatory uh, boundaries yet, they still warn that we don't make any iffy claims as it relates and governs to safety. So how do you read a CBD label? This is what we're going to learn tonight. How do you read a CBD label? And it's really up to consumers to do their research. But that's why hashtag the Wakana difference is so important. So important that you share this information with your team, your business partners, and your customers every single month because this information is going to equip you and to take your business to the next level because now you're confident and you're empowered with education that can help your consumer and customer base. So what you're going to look for on a CBD label is the amount of CBD in milligrams. You're going to look for the supplement fat panel, including the ingredients and other ingredients. And it's really important to help your customer and even yourself look at ingredients. You know, that person may have a food allergy or sensitivity. I've run into quite a number of people that have a sensitivity to turmeric. So it's important to know that our Hempradium 500 has a proprietary formulation with turmeric in it. You'll also see the net weight of the bottle. You'll see the, you need to find a, a label that has the suggested use. It should clearly label if it's a full spectrum product, a broad spectrum product, or an isolate. Uh, you will find a barcode that will help if there's any uh, recall on the product and a warning area. And also, more importantly, is the product really CBD? We know that's the most important finding to determine if the product is really CBD. So CBD or cannabidiol or cannabis sativa L should be somewhere on the bottle. If it isn't, then it's probably hemp seed oil. Amazon, this is important. If you have a person or loved one or customer that says that CBD didn't work and you find out they bought it on Amazon, well, it's probably true because Amazon cannot sell CBD. But what they can sell is hemp seed oil or hemp oil, which is not CBD. 
So that's why folks are not getting results because they're buying products off of Amazon. And then what is the origin of the CBD? Our products are sourced from U.S. farms in Oregon, Kentucky, and Colorado. U.S. hemp has a higher quality than hemp sourced from China or Germany. So finding out what the source of the hemp plant is coming from. So here is an example. This one is really fun. I get these inquiries every day. So these are products that were found on Amazon. And a lot of uh, business partners will come to me and they'll say, Dr. Rita, oh my God, my friend is using this product and it's 240,000 milligrams of CBD. Or they're taking a product that has 150,000 milligrams of CBD. And so now you can see that these products are not CBD products, they're hemp oil. They're just hemp seeds that are crushed and extracted and formulated into an oil. And that's why the milligrams are crazy, right? So you're feeling all bad saying we only have a 500 milligram hempranium and this person has a 240,000 milligram bottle. Well, it's because it's not CBD, okay? So you have to understand and educate those that you love, those, those customers and potential and prospects that what they're taking is not a CBD product and that it's hemp seed oil, that it won't hurt them, it won't harm them, but it's not gonna give them the benefits and the, re and the resolution that they're looking for. So let's look at our Hempranium 500 milligram label. Again, we want to find the total amount of CBD in milligrams in the entire bottle. So that's 500 milligrams. We want to find the net weight, which is 15 ml mLs. In the entire body, bottle, there's 500 milligrams. We want to look at the ingredients listed. What are we looking for? We've got to find CBD somewhere, right? It's got to say CBD, sativa. It's got to say those two main products to know it's a CBD product and not a hemp seed oil, okay? So our ingredients in our Impranium 500 is organically grown CBD uh, sativa oil. We have our carrier oil, organic MCT coconut. Our organic hemp oil is another carrier oil. Our organic black seed oil, our organic turmeric, and our organic peppermint. All of our ingredients are organic at Wakana. Also, the supplement facts will give you how many milligrams of CBD per drop. It will give a suggested dosing. Daily support is six drops daily. Health support is 15 drops daily. Extreme support is 30 drops daily. There should be a contact number so your customer can call for any questions as well as an address. Our gummies, let's look at our gummies. Our gummies, total amount of CBD in the four count pack is noted to be, um, this is our 20 count bottle, excuse me. This is a larger view so you can see it better. It's 500 milligrams. Well, how is it 500 milligrams? Well, 20 times 25 is 500 milligrams. Each gummy, as you can see, is 25 milligrams. It allocates and shows you that it's a full spectrum product. Now notice it doesn't say what kind of power gummies for sleep, sex, and inflammation. It just uses the words there, not making any medical claim as we saw in the other product. The ingredients are here, showing that our gummies are infused, not coated, with organically grown cannabis sativa, CBD. Gotta find the word CBD to ensure that it's a CBD product. How do you take it? The directions are here. The serving size, a half of gummy is suggested increasing it to one. Some more instructions about refrigerating them, as well as warning, making sure that those who are not 
um, that are under the age of 21 are not using the product. Our barcodes, all of these things should be on our labels. Our Hempranium MD is another product. Again, showing you the total amount of milligrams in a 15 ml bottle. Also showing you the ingredients. What are we looking for? We are looking for CBD. The ingredients, a proprietary blend of organically grown CBD sativa oil and hemp seed and hemp oil is the carrier oil, okay? The supplement facts, how to take them, warning, contact information, all these things are critical when you are dealing with the CBD market. So now you understand that when a customer or family member comes to you and asks you why their product that is not working for them, which is 240,000 milligrams, and why a 500 milligram bottle or milligram dosage would work for them. Now you can educate them in letting them know that what they're taking is not CBD. It's hemp oil. It's not going to hurt them, but it's not going to help them. It's not going to give them the results that they're looking for. So hopefully you're feeling like this. Yes, I got it. I know how to read a label. I know where to find the milligrams. I know how to find the net weight. I know how to find the dosing recommendations. I know what to look for in a CBD product that makes it different from a hemp seed product. I understand why we can't put on our labels that we have a product for migraines or we have a product for lupus or we have a product for anxiety. We are not allowed to put those things on bottles, but just know all of the benefits of CBD, I talk about them each and every week and how there are research and data that shows that CBD can address their issues. So as I end, I want to just get you all excited about how hashtag the Wakanda difference, how our quality and compliance department here at Wakanda is about to level up. And you want to make sure that you are a part of our 710 virtual conference. Why? Because we are about to make and roll out a very special announcement and partnership that you absolutely don't want to miss. We are going to have a very special guest that is not going to only take Wakana to the next level, but is about to take your business and the quality of products that we're going to be offering in the marketplace to the next level. So I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Ross and thank you for tuning in and get ready for Thomas Sewell. Woo my goodness. Is there anybody out there that is as proud of our products as I am? My goodness. I mean, it gives you the confidence to be able to say what you say and know that it's backed up by wonderful, wonderful products. We're legal and we don't have to just bug Dr. Rita all the time about which product, which product, which product. Okay, CBD just doesn't. Just say that. And, and, and then here, watch this video. She's already done it. <laughs> okay. And come on, guys, stop seeing gummy bears. <laughs> so we're moving right along. Listen, compliance is what's going to take us to the next level. It's going to cause you to be able to have the confidence to speak about the things that you're talking about. Now, our next speaker, our final speaker for our second monthly uh, Wakanda Difference, hashtag the Wakanda Difference, is Mr. Thomas L. Sewell. He is the Senior Director of Quality Assurance at Wakana. He has a background that spans various disciplines. He began his career in the health and vision care industry, moving through ranks at organizations such as IMED, Vision Care, and Zealous Healthcare, just to name a few. His extensive knowledge of those spaces made him a natural fit for the position and the subject matter expert regarding compliance. For example, during his time at Zealous Healthcare, he was responsible for the retention of over $25 million in revenue. 
within a two year time frame. And as compliance auditor, he withheld over $1.3 million in fraudulent claims. Oh my goodness. When it comes to compliance and quality assurance, he's a man of genuine passion and enthusiasm. Matter of fact, we call him TJ. Please welcome Mr. Thomas L. Sewell. We can't hear you. You're muted. Can you hear me now, Dr. Raj? Yes. Excellent, 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 excellent. Like Dr. Like Dr. Joy said, we're not going to allow that to stop the show. But first off, I just wanted to say thank you for Dr. Roz. I can tell you in preparing for the Wakana difference every single month, it's such a sincere pleasure to work with her. I can tell you she always comes prepared and I, she really sets the tone for the compliance committee to really being their best game. So again, Dr. Roz, I thank you, I appreciate you for gracing us with your hosting abilities with hashtag the Wakana difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in. Where things stand, CBD mislabeling. So I'm going to give you insight in regards to where the market stands in regards to CBD mislabeling. So let's jump right in. Where things stand, the United States of America. So I can tell you, Senator Mitch McConnell is on the record, and you know what he's saying? He is pushing the United States of, States of American government to go ahead and issue a formal inform, enforcement discretion policy. And what that means is, is while we are in limbo waiting to see where the CBD market is going to go in regards to what the FDA is going to dictate in regards to regulation. He's saying in the interim, so that because Kentucky, which is the state that Senator Mitch McConnell is a representative of, they are rapidly developing hemp in that specific state. So what he's saying is telling the FDA that in the interim, while you guys are coming up with the regulation policy, at least go ahead and put in a discretion policy in regards to what is and what isn't acceptable to alleviate any type of lawsuits and et cetera. Where things stand, CBD and dietary supplements. The law defines dietary supplements in part as products taken by mouth that contain a dietary ingredient. Dietary ingredients includes vitamins, minerals, amino acids, herbals, or botanical, as well as substances that can be used to supplement a diet. So that there is actually published on the FDA website, and that is what they define as a dietary supplement. So the FDA has concluded that THC and CBD products are excluded from the dietary supplement. So why is CBD excluded from being a dietary supplement? Federal law does not require dietary supplements to be proven safe to the FDA satisfaction before they are marketed. And so what CBD, what some CBD companies have done is that they have marketed their product as a dietary supplement in trying to advertise it as a dietary supplement. That means that the FDA doesn't have any regulation in regards to how that product is marketed, as it indicates. So the reason why the FDA is so strict to ensure that CBD is not marketed as a dietary supplement is to ensure that it is actually 
following the parameters that the FDA has set forth in regards to CBD. So when a company is marketing their products as a dietary supplement and an active ingredient in CBD is listed in that product, what happens is, is that they are now considering, they, they are now mislabeled. And so an example of the action that can be taken in regards to a company that is mislabeling. So I'm sure that many of us are familiar with Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web is considered by many a pioneer in the industry. But unfortunately, at this current time, Charlotte's Web is currently facing a class action lawsuit in the state of California due to the fact that they have marketed their product as a dietary supplement. California is a very health conscious state. And so they take the term dietary supplement very seriously. So the fact that Charlotte Duet has marketed their product as a dietary supplement and the FDA has clearly indicated that CBD products are not to be marketed as a dietary supplement, that is why they are currently facing a class action lawsuit in the state of California. Where things stand, adequate instruction. Hamero Corp DBA Nature CBD oil distribution. A warning letter as of April 20th, 2020. The reason that I added this to my slide because I wanted you to know that, this, that the FDA is currently and actively investigating CBD companies that are not following the restrictions in regards to how CBD is to be marketed that they have laid out thus far. So this specific company received a warning letter from the FDA due to the fact that on their products nor their website did they provide adequate instructions for use, meaning directions under which a lay person can use a drug safely and for the purposes for which it is intended. So what that is saying is for a person that is unfamiliar with a specific kind of product, again, such as CBD, that it is required by the FDA for them to provide instructions to ensure that that specific consumer is not harmed by that product. FDA approved prescription drugs that bear their FDA approved labeling are exempt from the requirements that bear adequate instructions. So what this is simply indicating, unless you are a drug that has been approved and tested by the FDA, and if that FDA labeling is not listed on the label, then you have to, you are required by federal law to provide instructions. And if you don't, then you are then plausible to receiving a warning letter that is published on the FDA website. Again, this is Noil Oil LLC. The reason that I added this slide is that I wanted to give you an understanding of when you go to the FDA and when it lists warning letters that have been submitted to CBD companies, you are then published on the FDA website. So that is why we have implemented the Wakanda difference and ensuring that our distributors are educated in regards to the process as a whole and how they can market the product. Where things stand, approved CBD drug. Epidolex is the only FDA approved drug that, is, that has a primary component of cannabidiol also referred to as CBD on the market. It is the only drug that can make health claims that has CBD as a primary component. It is also important to know that this is a synthetic drug. So they are the only company that can make medical claims treatments in regards to seizures, and also LSG. Where things stand, misleading, unproven, or false claims. This is one of the most serious ones that CBD companies really need to make sure that they are being responsible for. This here, again, is published from the FDA website. 
misleading, unproven, or false claims associated with CBD products may lead consumers to put off important medical care, such as proper diagnosis, treatment, and supportive care. One of the things that Dr. Rita always indicates is that when you are utilizing your CBD, make sure that you consult with your doctor because we want to ensure that there is no interaction between CBD and the drugs that you're taking that can negatively impact you. And so that is so important because when companies are making misleading, unproven, or false claims in regards to how CBD can treat, mitigate, or cure, then it leaves the consumer very vulnerable because now, based upon those claims, they feel that they may not have to take the appropriate medications that their doctor has prescribed. Unlike the FDA-approved CBD drug product, unapproved CBD, pro unapproved CBD products, which could include cosmetics, food, products marketed as dietary supplements, and other products other than Epidolex, making therapeutics claims, have not been subject to FDA evaluation regarding whether they are effective to treat a particular disease or have effects that may be claimed. So again, this is just the FDA re-indicating. If you have not been through our testing and not have been approved, then you are not to make any claims that your specific product can heal, can mitigate, and based upon, based upon the infinite product company, they actually received a warning letter from the FDA based upon the claims that they made on their specific website. And unfortunately for them, this was published November 22nd, 2019. Shortly after the FDA issued that warning letter, this is what happened next. A class action lawsuit. Again, the state of California is very strict in regards to products that are marketed to natives of California. So if you are not in compliance, then it is very you are then susceptible to a lawsuit. In this specific case, there was a class action lawsuit that indicated that, hey, your product made specific claims, saying that it can cure, saying that it can heal, and based upon those claims that have been published on your website, now you've misled me as a consumer. So due to you now misleading me, now I have the authority and the California government is now supporting me in filing a lawsuit against your specific company. So when we educate on mislabeling, know that it is very important. And as a distributor, it's your responsibility to ensure that you are astute and you are up to date in regards to what the compliance is for our products. Where things stand, Wakana for life. So here at Wakana, we have went ahead and implemented, this is our second annual, the Wakana difference. The entire purpose of us doing the Wakana purpose is to make compliance digestible to our distributors. So when you're asked those intelligent questions, when you're asked those intentional questions, you, are, you have the knowledge and are equipped to adequately respond. Here at Wakana, myself and Dr. McGuire, we ensure that we have proper labeling. Because if we don't have proper labeling, then what that does is that leaves our customers susceptible to not understanding how to properly use CBD. Also, we have the Wakana Compliance Committee. We have a committee that is solely dedicated to ensure not only that for the corporate infrastructure that compliance is up to par, but also making sure that our distributors. So our committee does not just consist of our corporate employees, but it also consists of our distributors that are astute and understand where compliance is, and they assist us in making sure that we are pioneering what it means to be in compliance for a CBD company. All of our bottles, direction of use. 
we clearly indicate how you are supposed to utilize CBD into your regimen. And we have a surplus of conference calls, and we have education, and we have certification. So there are just so many different avenues where you can learn the necessary information to ensure that you're ingesting your CBD appropriately. Dosage instructions, every single bottle, every single product, it indicates, hey, where your dosage should be in utilizing that specific product. And then lastly, and this is up and coming, this is something that is going to be implemented, and we have some super exciting blockbuster announcements for our 710 Virtual World Conference. We are so excited. Our team has worked so super hard to make sure that we are able to provide you the most up-to-date information to let you know where we stand to ensure that we are providing the integrity necessary for our distributors to be Wakana proud. And so I want to thank everyone for joining the call. I want to give a special thanks out to Gerald, who does our graphics and also sits on our committee. I also want to, again, thank Dr. Raj, her intellect, her intentionality, her always being able to meet the objective. Like I said, it sets the tone for our entire team. So we thank you. We appreciate God bless you, Dr. Raj. And of course, the phenomenal, the dynamic, the innovative, the super exciting, the millennial that is leading leading the way for the future, which is Dr. Joy Smith. Yes. You, we thank you. We appreciate you. We thank you for not just dedicating um, your time to us, but also to de dedicating your time to ensure that our distributors are compliant. We appreciate you. So I just want to go ahead and close things out. And I just want to thank everybody for taking the time to join us. We are going Facebook Live for the Laquana difference. And then we're also going to take some questions. So if you have any questions, if you have any clarity, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Raj. Dr. Raj is going to give us some insight. So while Dr. Raj is speaking, please feel free to blow up the question line because any questions you have, we're here to answer. Wow, 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 wow. My goodness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Wakana. Thank you, Dr. TJ. I'm calling you now the doctor of compliance. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. The Wakanda Difference, this is our second month, and every third Friday of the month, we're here sharing this powerful information because people ask, have asked me all the time, what makes your company different? Well, here it is. Here's one of the reasons we're so different because when you go to those smoke shops, they don't know what CBD even stands for. And they can't tell you anything. So when you come to these kind of sessions, now you can feel that you are compliant, that you have a product that you can be comfortable with, and that you can be proud of. Wakana proud. So thank you, everybody, for being here. I, I see our CEO popping in, and we're about ready to have a party, I believe. <laughs> All right. All right, so people, listen, get ready, get ready. We're going to have a party. We're going to celebrate uh, Juneteenth style. What kind of Juneteenth style? So let's see if we have any kind of questions. Uh, mostly everything is just saying that it's the bomb.com. appreciate everything. I don't see any questions. I just see accolades and think saying what kind is the best, all that good stuff. Yeah, I, I don't even see any questions. Got yet. Y'all just knocked it out the park, Dr. Rita, Dr. Joy, Thomas. Awesome, awesome. So I don't think there's, if there's nothing else, Dr. Rita, do you have anything? Well, I just want to say that this has been truly an amazing conference, webinar, Zoom. I feel that each and every month that our business partners are gonna be more confident, not only in the products that they're using and distributing to others, but really understanding that the compliance piece is critical. It's critical during this time. It's critical to ensure that the safety, the potency, um, 
the transparency and commitment that we have here at Wakana, it is uh, imperative that they really help to uh, explain that and to show that to our customers. And that's the Wakana difference. That's what makes our products different from products that are at the video store and the gas station and products that are found on Amazon, products that are found in uh, health food stores, products that are not sourced organically, products that are not tested, products that are not verified is critical. When we're talking about our loved ones that may be immunocompromised and get a product that has mold and mildew or pesticides or heavy metals, that can be a really big problem. So I'm excited to be a part of a company that really makes compliance and quality at the forefront. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, someone said, what's coming up next? Well, what's coming up next is you're going to log out of here when we shut it down, and you're going to go over to the Facebook, the Wakanda for Life Facebook page, and we're going to be live very shortly celebrating Juneteenth. If there's nothing else, Dr. Rita, there are no questions. No questions. Wow, we must have been really, really, really good. <laughs> I, do want to, uh, I do want to leave my contact email, RitaMD at Wakana.com. I'll put that in the chat section. You may uh, think of some questions a little later. Um, and then uh, TJ will put his as well. Um, this is uh, our contact, RitaMD at Wakana.com. And then TJ will put his there so that you can um, contact us with any questions as it relates to compliance and quality and our products. Thank you so much, Dr. Roz. We love you, we appreciate you. Adrian, Dr. Other Shaw Belt, uh, <laughs> good evening. We love you too. And well, let's get ready to uh, celebrate. Let's get this party started. <laughs> I love you all. Good night, everybody. Thank you, all. Thank Thank you for joining. Many blessings.